with major automakers like Ford, Mercedes, Daimler, Volvo, General Motors, all coming out with electric vehicle versions of the commercial vehicles, the prospect of transitioning a commercial fleet to zero emission vehicles has never seemed more viable. In this video, I'm gonna take you through some examples of how organizations are using a fleet assessment to help them navigate the uncertainties when adopting these emerging transportation technologies. I'll walk you through each step of the fleet assessment in detail, and I'll show you a couple of examples of what this looks like in the real world. All that and more coming up. Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Brewer and I'm the Zero Emission Vehicle Charging Specialist with Charge Forward. We provide fleet electrification guidance and end-to-end -end electric vehicle charging solutions to public and private sector organizations. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, please make sure to check out our website at chargeforward.com. For organizations looking to reduce their carbon footprint, the transition from internal combustion engine vehicles to zero emission vehicles seems like low hanging fruit. Therefore, many organizations are looking to assess how they can adopt zero emission vehicles in their fleets as a means to reduce greenhouse gas emissions without breaking the bank. However, transitioning to zero emission vehicles is not something most organizations have ever done before. Sure, there are a couple pilots and white papers out there, but full-scale electrification of a fleet with complex operational requirements is still something that's fraught with uncertainty and risk. And that's why so many organizations are completing a fleet assessment. The goal of the fleet assessment is to develop a vehicle replacement roadmap that an organization can follow to guide them on their journey to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from transportation sources. The main deliverable of a fleet assessment vehicle roadmap is the roadmap. It's essentially a fleet list sorted by vehicle replacement date, showing the current vehicle, when it's going to be replaced and what it's going to be replaced with. It sounds simple enough, right? It's supposed to be easy to follow. But backing up each and every one of those recommendations is a lot of analysis. Primarily, the analysis focuses on two areas, economic viability of the vehicle that's to be replaced and the operational feasibility of the replacement vehicle. So what does that even mean? Let's take a look. Let's start with economic viability. Essentially, when it comes to these kinds of projects, there's going to be a cost measured in dollars and a benefit measured in carbon. If the cost is too great for the benefit, even though there is a benefit, we're eliminating some emissions, that money could most likely be spent on another project and have a larger impact. The goal of economic viability analysis is to maximize value for money. A concept that most fleet managers are familiar with is the co total cost of ownership principle. When looking to replace a vehicle, we compare the total cost of that asset over the life of the asset rather than just the purchase price. So that means we're looking at variables such as fuel, insurance, maintenance cost, the residual value of the vehicle when we're going to sell it or dispose of it. All these things are factored. Fortunately, when calculating greenhouse gas emission reductions, we have fewer variables to consider. Essentially, what we need to look at is how many liters of fuel is the vehicle going to consume? Or alternatively, we could look at how many kilowatt hours of energy it's going to consume. We simply take those figures and multiply them by the emissions factor of that energy source. Now looking at the operational feasibility, we need to take into account what these vehicles are intended to be used for and how well suited is a zero emission vehicle to those tasks. This is done with a vehicle suitability assessment. The vehicle, the vehicle suitability assessment takes into account the capabilities of the vehicles available on the market today or in the near future, as well as the duty cycle required for fleet operations. Zero emission vehicles are starting to gain an interesting reputation. There's a lot of hype from both consumers and investors. And both startups as well as established automakers are walking a fine line between keeping up with their competition's outlandish claims and actually being able to deliver on some of those promises. And this is relevant to the fleet assessment because we really need to take a grain of salt when reviewing 
uh, some of the automakers stated claims about their vehicles. Something as real, uh, something as important as range, or even when it's realistically going to be delivered to your organization. Not to mention at what price they're going to be delivered at. So once we have an idea of what the vehicles uh, are available on the market, we relate to that the capabilities to get the job done. And those should, should be things such as towing capacity, seating capacity, cargo capacity, range requirements, or overall look and style of the vehicle. If you think your organization could benefit from completing a fleet assessment, make sure to check out the Go Electric Fleets program rebates and our website, charge for charge fwd.com. Each of our fleet assessments is carefully crafted with a clear and actual insights on how your organization can re reduce its carbon footprint from transportation service while maximizing value for money. We work with corporations, sustainability teams, municipalities, as well as organizations of all sizes. If that's not for you, no worries. We're always happy to help if you have any questions regarding fleet electrification. Thanks again for watching. Best of luck. It's sure to be an interesting decade in the auto sector.